All right. Well, let's get started. We're going to talk about some fun things tonight. Um, Brayden, just stay close, honey, but thank you. And thank you to the band. Would you give this band a big thank you for what they've done tonight? And uh, I want to share some things. If you're watching online, we're glad that you're here. We're going to ask you to stay with us all the way through and listen to this story because I believe even those of you watching online will find a place in it too. I told you uh, last week we were just going to talk about basically what I would call the story of the ramp. But it's, uh, it's actually more than that because it's not just the ramp story, it's also your story. And that's why you're here. Because for some wonderful reason, the Lord has allowed your life to intersect with the ramp. That's why you're sitting in this room. And that many of you know he doesn't make mistakes. Psalms 37 says he directs the steps of the righteous. And he delights in every detail of their lives. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Can I say it again? I believe I will. The Lord directs the steps of the righteous. And he delights in every detail of their lives. So it was not by chance that you just happened in here tonight or any other service. The Lord directed you here for a reason. I want to remind you before I even get started about uh, this story, uh, I'm going to tell you this first. The ramp itself is basically built or stands on what we call two pillars. And that is the pillar of presence and the pillar of purpose. So we're going to talk about both of those quickly tonight because for you to understand what God is about to do and what he's doing and what, why he has brought you to be a part of it, I think it's important to know where what you are becoming a part of, where it's come from, where it is, and where it's going. And for you to understand where it's going, you need to know where it's come from. So that's kind of what you're going to hear about tonight. But let me go way back. I'm going to go way back beyond just the beginning of the ramp. I'm going to skip on back to a place that's called outside of time. I live in the big picture. My staff can tell you that's just the way my brain works. I love to go way big picture in anything I do pretty much. I love to think of God that way. And there's a wonderful scripture that I'm going to open with tonight. I just find this, is, it's just one of my favorite passages in the Bible, as is the whole book, the book of Ephesians. It's a good one, isn't it? Listen to this. In the first chapter of Ephesians, it opens with this, uh, starting with verse chapter 1, verse uh, 3. Listen, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Now watch this. Even before he made the world. Let me say it. Even before he made the world, he loved us. And chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Let's skip on down to verse 9 for time's sake. He says, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And I love these next words, and this is the plan. I'm blown away by that passage because Paul is just telling us here, he's, <coughs> he's basically gone all the way back outside of time and he's saying even before God made anything he was already dreaming and planning he already knew us he already chose us before he's ever made anything and then you think about this all through this old testament this messiah is being prophesied of I mean, the people did not understand it. They were trying to figure it out. They were trying to grasp what it was these prophets were talking about. And even the prophets themselves, even the Bible says the angels themselves are looking into it to understand it. But Paul, by revelation in the book of Ephesians, gets the picture. And I love that's why Paul says, he says, and so now God has revealed to us the mysterious plan regarding Christ. A plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And then he says, and this is the plan. In other words, Paul is saying, I'm about to tell you the plan of God for the ages. Paul's saying, I'm just get ready. This is it. This is God's whole big picture of what he's doing. 
And this is the plan, verse 10. Here it is. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Paul said, this is it. You want to know why everything is on? You want to know what this whole universe is about? You want to know why we're here? You want to know what everything is pointing toward? He says, this is the plan. You want to know what God was talking about before the world began? Paul says, this is the plan. At the right time, God is going to bring everything under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and earth. Hallelujah. That's why he goes on to say a little bit later, wherefore God also has highly exalted him. Come on. You know what God is really about? His son, Jesus. Everything for him is his son, Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. God exalted him and he has given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. bow. Muhammad's knee will bow. Come on. Buddha will bow. Come on. The devil himself will bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father everybody get on your feet and give him praise right now let heaven hear us come on let heaven hear us no, 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 don't stop, don't stop everything, every tongue every knee, every heart It's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It'll always be about Jesus. Through all eternity, it's going to be about Jesus. Give him praise one more time. Everybody, it's Jesus now. It's Jesus forever. It's Jesus. (laughs) Glory to God and you may be seated. Don't worry about me. I don't have it. I say that every week until my healing's manifested. It's called chronic sinusitis, but I'm being healed every day. Every day in every way, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. At the name of Jesus, sinusitis bows. Hallelujah. And sinusitis confesses, Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, at the name of Jesus, cancer bows. And cancer confesses, Jesus Christ is Lord. At the name of Jesus, oh, heart disease will bow. And heart disease will have to confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Give him praise one more time right where you're sitting. I'm blown away that God had a dream. When there was nothing there, there's no, it's hard to imagine before time, but I'm blown away by that. I'm looking forward to getting to heaven and asking him a lot of questions. I love questions. I live on them. I'm blown away that there was a time, there was not a time, there was an eternity before time, and God existed, the three in one, and yet he has this dream in his heart to create this universe, this plan. These people, not just people, sons and daughters, beings to worship him. And I've often even just thought, why would you do that? Because even you, before the foundation of the world, knew the price that it was going to cost you. Why would you do this? Why would you create a plan? Why would you even desire a plan? I mean, you're God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three in one God existing in eternity past. There's nothing but God. And yet within his plan for sons and daughters and even angels and beings, before the world is created, he has determined that in order to have them and you and I and exist for human beings to exist, or even, like I said, even the angels themselves, he will have to give them what is called choice. Each one of them, even angels, have choice. We see that, obviously, with Lucifer. 
But the, why you think, you know, because why, why would he do such a thing? The choice is so risky. It's going to cost everything. It's going to cost what he would love the most. It will, be, it will cost him his only begotten son to give us choice. Why would he do that? I believe in my simple way of thinking. It could be summarized in this. Because he wanted to love and be loved. He wanted to love and be loved. And for him to be loved, the only way God could be loved is to give choice. Because without choice, there is no love. God did not want robots walking around. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. What love is that? But if you have a choice as to obey him or not obey him, if you have a choice to love him or not to love him, then you look at everything else. It's like what Rick Tao did when he married me. When he says, Karen, I know I could have any woman in the world. But I pick you. That tells me he loves me. And when we can look at God and say, I understand I have choice of anything in this world. But this world holds nothing for me. I want you. And that choice, that yes, will last for eternity. It's amazing to me. And so the Bible says in this verse, along with many others, even in Jeremiah, that he knew you before he made you. You've already been with God. You were in the mind of God. He loved you there. Can you imagine? Think about this. That's why Jesus said, I loved you first. I chose you first. You've already been with God. He knew you, loved you, named you, destined you. That's why he told Jeremiah, but before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and loved you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Your purpose for, with, with God was already determined before he ever sent you to the earth. And so when I loved the thought that when God finished his plan is when it began. So when he finishes his plan... He reaches through eternity and touches the hands of time, and they begin to tick. And when time began, that thing that he created that is sitting between these two eternities right here, eternity past, eternity future, here we are caught in the middle right here waiting for our time. And when God determined it was time for each person in his mind to come to the earth, he begins to send them according to their purpose in time. According to their purpose in time. I can say it like this quickly. When God sent, when it, it was time for Adam. He calls for Adam. He comes to the earth, fulfills his purpose and leaves. When God needed the purpose of a prophet, he calls for Daniel. Daniel comes to the earth, fulfills his purpose and leaves. I could just go all through the Bible. When God needed a worshiping warrior, he calls for David, who comes to the earth, fulfills his purpose and leaves. When God needed a little girl to birth the Messiah through, a, a, a young lady that would just say yes to God, he calls for Mary. She comes to the earth, fulfills her purpose at least when God needed a scribe to sit in Roman a Roman prison and 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 write the epistles he calls for Paul he comes to the earth fulfills his purpose and leaves when God needed a man to bring an awakening even to America he calls for John Wesley John Wesley comes to the earth fulfills his purpose and leaves when God needed an evangelist to preach to multitudes he calls for Billy Graham who comes to the earth fulfills his purpose and he leaves and now it's your turn. They came. They fulfilled. And they left. And now it's your time. I, I often sometimes go to the graveyard. I did the other day making a Facebook thing. I just did. Because that's a good place to make life decisions. Because when you go to the graveyard, you'll see on the tombstone the year they were born the year they died, and the dash in the middle. Everything we're talking about right now in your purpose is contained in that dash in the middle. You came here on purpose. You were not an accident. There was, listen to me, listen to me, listen. There was not one human being ever sent from the mind and the heart of God that was an accident. There was not one person ever born, ever. Not one, not one that was ever conceived. I don't care if they were conceived and they were just in the womb for one day and went back to God in a miscarriage. There was not one human being ever sent from God, ever sent from the mind of God, that God looked at that and went... 
uh-oh. Didn't know that one was coming. There wasn't a purpose. Now, there, there wasn't a purpose. Listen, even the mom and the daddy that didn't know they were coming. Even though some babies have been a big surprise, it was no surprise to God. He didn't look in the womb and say, ooh, no pro- I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. No, you were sent on purpose, on purpose. You are breathing for a purpose and for a reason. Boiling it down to this, I can tell you this. You have come from God to live for God, to go back to God. And that's really all that really matters. Everything is God. Every, I don't care what field of, 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 of a career you may have. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a school teacher, an engineer. It does not matter. You were sent from God to live for God. Everything we do is about the kingdom of God. Everywhere you are is your mission field. No matter what you do, you are on this earth to advance the kingdom of God in whatever place God has ever put you. And anything else you do is a waste of time. And so I'm telling you tonight, don't waste your time. You are here with purpose and you'll answer to God for every moment of how you spent your time. All of that to say, all the more reason it's important that we answer back when he sent us to this earth with our yes. I said my yes to God when I was a little girl. Bear with me for only a few moments as I just sort of tell you my story. It's too long to tell the details. It's 60 years worth almost. Next month is 60. I was born September the 30th, 1960. That's when my time on earth began. Well, after conception. Nine months later. 